basic storyline for Bright is basically in, a, in an alternate present, uh, mythical creatures and humankind coexist together. Of course, you got the elves, orcs, and there's, I think there's probably dwarves. I think they mentioned that I can't remember exactly. They might, they might be there somewhere. There's dragons, there's fairies, you know, mythical creatures and humans of all kinds. Um, they live, coexist together, and a experienced cop is partnered with a rookie orc police officer. And there's both a good thing and a bad thing, but the bad thing is, though, is is the racism between orcs and humans, while just any mythical creature and humans is bad. And, um, yeah, the force wants the orc off the team, but Will Smith's character has this kind of, like, you know, partner with partner thing, and he's kind of like, he wants him off, but at the same time he doesn't want him off in a bad way. Um, and he wants to protect his partner. But anyway, um, continuing on with the story, they come, they, they react, it seems like a normal situation, they're going to react to a, got a call, you know, check it out, and they come across a magic wand. And everyone wants this magic wand, because magic wands, of course, grant wishes, blah blah blah, but also can bring about the Dark Lord that basically almost destroyed the world 2,000 years ago. Okay, so that's the basic plot outline. Um, Bright is actually, I know a lot, a lot of criticism has been getting towards this movie, and Netflix movie. This is my, I think this is my first Netflix movie I'm reviewing here. But, but, uh, Bright has been getting a lot of hate, and I find it kind of unnecessary. Um, mostly from critics, not much from fans. Some fans, yeah, are criticizing it, but not a lot. Um, I, I actually found this movie quite enjoyable. I, I, uh, to start off, I'm a fan of uh, fantasy elements and cop thrillers, and this film was treated as both. It was a cop thriller and a fantasy movie meshed together evenly and beautifully. Um, and they had perfect casting for a lot of these, um, uh, for a lot of these characters, but I'll, I'll get to that later. But the blending of the, uh, the two, two different, uh, genres together was actually quite well done. In basic, in the basic level, yes, it's a cop thriller. And it's treated like a cop thriller, like you see from Street Kings or, uh, Training Day, or, uh, what was the other one? I forgot. It's like any LAPD cop, uh, street cop movie. That's basically what it is. Um, and then mixed with that, you've got your fantasy characters. You've got the fantasy element, which is, you know, fairies, elves, like I mentioned before, and interwoven in, and, um, and, and it's kind of like brought to the modern era so that it could fit the cop thriller. And we've got, you know, your cliche cop through other things. You got bad cops, you got the gangs, you got uh, you know, titty bars, <laughs> you know, you got the bad side of LA. You got all these things mixed in well, but given the fantasy twist to it. Like some of the gangs are yeah, some of them are still like, you know, the typical Mexican Latino or African American gang, you know, this and that. But you also got the orcs who are kind of treated as the very lowest class of <laughs> of uh, society in there as well, and then you got the elves for the hierarchy. Um, so yeah, you got all these different elements being woven in to fit each other. And it's pretty well done, I have to admit. Um, the, let's see, the casting is pretty well done. Will Smith, of course, is always great in anything he does. Joel Ergutin was a surprise playing the part of Nick, an orc cop, and his internal struggles of being an orc and being a cop, how it means to his society, uh, because society sees him as a traitor, which is completely baffling, but at the same time understandable because the orcs kind of, yes, they have that mentality fuck the police, but also because the orcs don't think they can get out of any situation. You know, they chose the side of the Dark Lord thousands of years ago, and people put them down that way to this, th to this day. Uh, so it has, so to see his internal struggle of like wanting to do good for himself and be a good person, you know, not. St just stick to the stereotype and this and that. It's, it's an interesting character development. Um, and then, uh, well, what was it? Uh, but the way he looked in the makeup was pretty believable. It took me a few minutes to get that it was Joel Egerton at first because it's like he didn't speak it probably because of the dentures because he, 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 he doesn't have the full orc pointed, pointed uh, teeth like everybody else. He had to round them off because he's a cop. But even then, the dentures kind of got in the way, so I couldn't quite. He he's still he's still uh, he, you could still hear him, 
and you can read him and you can hear him well. He speaks normally, but it's just his voice didn't come off that well, so I didn't pinpoint it as Joel Egan took me a few minutes. Uh, but um, but the makeup, like bluish makeup, uh, it just blended so well. You can actually believe this guy's an orc. He didn't have like a typical orc like hunchness or something you see from Lord of the Rings or other fantasy films and shows or anything like that. It was kind of like like a modern era orc. It was pretty cool. Um, the el the hell the elves. Oh my god, <laughs> I was so impressed with the elves. The casting choices they got. They got people who either look completely beautiful or people could pass off a of beautiful just add a little makeup to them and they'd be fine the ears were nice and long the hair was just perfect they, whether they were a good guy or a bad guy the clothing was like like, like tailor-made hand stitch italian or something it just spoke volumes their costumes and the cars they rode they actually have a town in la just called elf town um but the, the casting oh my god it was just perfect uh, i you could just believe these people are elves you didn't have to be, add any more highlights to them. It's just like Numi Rapace. I love Rapace. Sorry, I love her, and she was just you. She just walked in, and I didn't even see the ears. I'm like, oh, she's an elf. I love it. <laughs> you know, you didn't have to say anything more. Just give me her face, and yep, yep, she's an elf. Um. So yeah, the casting was really well done. I was surprised by Margaret Cho. Very much surprised, and I have to give her props, man. I I because I mostly know her from comedy. So I have to give her props for doing the drama and a little respect too, because I respect actors who can easily change the genre. And like Robin Williams, we all know him as a funny guy. He's done comedy all the time. But have you seen his drama work? His drama work is impressive. Academy Award worthy. He actually won an Academy Award. And it just you have to give an, an, some extra respect to actors who do comedy and drama seamlessly. Um, and Margaret Cho is now added to that. Um, uh, let's see. I, it was just beautiful casting wise design wise uh they didn't do they kind of well, they kind of went back and forth with cl cliche bad la and adding a little bit of their twist to it uh because they kind of they had the obvious like street trashed la gangster land area but uh, with the graffiti mixed with modern day graffiti and kind of like mythical graffiti not like magic graffiti but graffiti done by elves orcs and this and that racial slurs of the fantasy and this and that and so they kind of went back and forth with that but it was still kind of kind of they kind of went back and forth because just so the believability like it still say okay it's the modern world we're not too far into the fantasy elements um costumes were nice like i was mentioning earlier with the elves they were just so beautiful the costumes you could tell what they were their status in life everything from that Orcs had the basic street get street uh, the basic street wear uh, street wear sorry, uh, so you, you can basically pinpoint them for anywhere like um, lower class, uh, uh, very low to poor class society or just kind of the gangster cliche, um, but yeah it was pretty good. Uh, now other things like um, getting trying to get into the needy and greedy here I'm trying to say it as best I can here. Because a lot of the hate I've seen, we seem to be noticing with, uh, particularly not just this movie, but a lot of movies in general, is that people only look at the basic layer. They don't go back, either rewatch the movie or as they're watching the movie, picking the film apart, going through the layers and seeing what 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 is in this film, like what is it saying, or what can I interpret from it. It's just everybody just looks at the basic layer and doesn't glance at what's down below. Um, and I was going to do this, doing it as I was watching because you kind of can see the allegorical elements or just kind of the suggestion of what this film was talking about from like anything from like like the orcs yeah were basic you know substitution for african-american latino uh lower class uh from la or gangs or this and that you can kind of very interpret that and also just basically like nick you can basically interpret him as someone who grew up in a bad environment but he's trying to do better. He's trying to get out of that cliche, again, that struggle that this character is going through. And that's something that a lot of people, I think, can identify with. Because there's a lot of people who do grow up in bad environments who want to do good. It's just that everybody always looks down upon them and think he's going to do bad when he's just trying to do good. Um, so I think a lot of people miss that. Um, and also the wand, can, the magic wand that everybody's after that they're trying to hide can be interpreted as different ways, as like drugs, uh, <laughs> a secret weapon, or 
money, any type of greed or anything that a bad a cop would make a cop bad or something like that. You could interpret it as anything. Um, let's see. Uh, uh, let's see. The Dark Lord can be seen as a mob, like the bad elves that are that are the main antagonists from these films. You could interpret it as the mob or mafia or something like that. That's just my basic interpretation of it. But there's so much, so much you can do for and interpret it in different ways, in different time periods or anything like that. Um, let's see. Uh, special effects wise, I was kind of surprised by the, by the special effects for this movie. I, I hadn't seen a Netflix movie before, so I couldn't didn't know what to expect. And I was surprised by high quality the special effects were, and I liked how they they did something different with the magic. They didn't make it as mystical and wondrous as we saw from previous pre previous fantasy movies. They kind of treated it like. Uh, ancient technology or some technology like we've seen it thousands of times before so they don't make it as flashy or big or something they kind of treated it as not something we see every day but less flashy and more normal and that it's kind of made it something different than what we've ever seen before and and so there is some some wonder because it kind of changes perspective at like because the frame just kind of just jiggles around and the light just gets brighter so it's kind of like it's kind of treated like a new, no that's a bad analogy i was going to say it's like a new iphone but no that's that's bad um it's it's very much very much I'm trying to it's like it's like all of the fantasy elements like um the like because the l's have course some sort of power or something within them but because we've seen it so much we got something that's a little bit different like the magic wand is treated as something very new like a bit of technology we haven't seen but is not treated like every other fantasy film we've ever seen so it's kind it's kind of new and awe-inspiring but at the same time treated with a sense of normalcy and that it is not all that flashy I guess I'm trying to trying to trying to Say it as best I can, but I'm I'm still struggling with trying to describe the wand and its magic and how it's different, because it's not treated like Harry Potter. I'll take it like that. It's not treated as Harry Potter, uh, so it's it's just a little different. That's all. I'll, I guess that's what I could say. Um, let's see. And let's see. And overall, the story was pretty good too. I liked how, how it came to a conclusion. I liked the character development. I like everything about it. It is a, it is a good movie. It is worth taking a peek. And I have to say, much like the Blade Runner films, I want to see more. I want to see what else we could do with this world. I want to see what are the stories that can be told. Uh, I want to see more of these characters. Um, I'm not necessarily saying the sequel has to bring about the Dark Lord, but do something either for that or something completely different like there's like like we can learn more about how the elves are controlling the world and maybe have an espionage thriller of corporations or something like that or or a political thriller or there's a lot of different things you could do with this world and that's the same thing with Blade Runner there's a lot you can do and a lot of stories you can tell uh, but yeah overall I like this movie and I would have to give it two and a half stars out of five. It's not a fantastic movie. It's not a dumb movie. It is actually good. It is almost great. It is just a fun movie. And it has some really great bright points. Yeah, a couple of bad points. Like, uh, there was a couple bit of humor I felt that just wasn't necessary. But other than that, it is a great movie. It is beautiful. I think it is worth taking a peek. And I'll leave it at that. Thank you for watching, watching me stutter and trying to explain this shit off the cuff, but uh, thank you very much and have a nice day.